Welcome to Talon Estonia for Simple Session 13. This is the 10th year at Saku Arena. We've got 104 riders, 24 countries represented, 10,000 screaming fans, and over 1 million people watching online. This is the contest these riders have been waiting for. We've got lots of bikes and lots of action, ready to go down here at Simple Session. The top riders in the world are here ready to do battle on what can only be described as a BMX rider's dream course. With a perfect balance of street and park obstacles, we will no doubt get to witness the best of both BMX worlds. The course itself is built from the ground up and it's always a new design each year. Two and a half months of construction and four days to assemble is no easy task, but when you've got the world's greatest ramp builder slash designer running the show, things get done. Um, it, it's, uh, it's really cool, like every year when I design this, I, I really think a lot about certain guys that are coming to the contest, you know, whether they're street guys or park guys and stuff. And it's pretty awesome, like if there's a guy like Brian Kaczynski or something, I actually like drew up a feature that I thought he'd be like really into riding and stuff. And, and it's awesome because it's in a way that it's not like totally street, it's like a lot of ramp and like transition with the stuff too. So it makes the objects like super versatile for that park guy and for the street guy. Simple Session is broadcast live to the world online on Extreme.com. This allows BMX fans that couldn't make it to Talon to be a part of the action. There's a 30-person production team behind the scenes bringing the world all the BMX goodness Simple Session has to offer. This is also the first year that Xbox broadcasts Simple Session. Xbox users not only got to witness the contest, they were also able to interact and vote for their favorite tricks. Speaking of interacting, one aspect of Simple Session that keeps the riders coming back is the camaraderie. Sure, they're all competitors, but they're also really good friends. There's always lots of catching up during practice with old friends reminiscing with each other. This atmosphere also carries over to the fans that get up close and personal with their favorite riders. Ask any pro what one of their best parts about Simple Session is, they'll tell you, it's the fans. The fans at Simple Session are simply the best. The energy, smiles, and roar of the crowd certainly make this contest what it is, and riders love it. Riders started to show up a day or two before practice, and we were able to catch up with Tommy Dugan. Tommy's got a huge fan base here at Simple Session, and it's crazy because he's never actually been here. He's had some bad luck the last three years trying to make it here, and although he made it here this year, his luck still isn't that good. Uh, yeah, after three or four years of attempting, I finally made it to Simple Session, y'all. But my bike didn't. I was lucky enough to make it, no bike. <laughs> My first year excuse, I broke my wrist the week before I was supposed to fly out to the contest. The second year I tried to come out, we got our connection was hit by a crazy snowstorm, of course, so we missed out and just had to sit at home in Austin. That big giant storm all across the United States kind of put a big damper on our trip. We had flights shut down for like three days in a row. Um, it was just a bummer. This is was supposed to be my fifth time to be there and Dugan's first. It's his second real attempt or third real attempt to come third year i was in a coma <laughs> instead of coming over that sounded a lot more fun to do to just hang out and be in a coma instead and uh the fourth year right now you're looking at it uh no bike a bad snowstorm caused almost 10 different riders bikes to be missing hopefully tommy's bike will show up before the contest starts another rider we caught up with is josh harrington Josh is a former Simple Session champion as well as high air winner in 2007. He's consistently a crowd favorite and he's almost always in the finals. One of the toughest guys out there in addition to being one of the best rail riders in BMX. My name is Josh Harrington. This is my fifth Simple Session 2013. Yeah, it's, it's always fun. I've had some bad luck in the end a couple times, but that's just part of what we do. We push it too hard in the end when you're tired, it can happen, but hope and have a good time this year and not let that happen. And every time is a good experience. I love it here. I keep coming back just because it's a good atmosphere. It seems like all the people here really appreciate all styles of riding. They don't just scream for the backflip. Like, I, I don't always do like the craziest spinning and flipping tricks, and I feel like 
it's cool and that's how riding should be. It shouldn't just be gymnastics and it's, it's cool to come to a place where the people appreciate any style of riding, not just the wild looking stuff that's not really understandable. Riders get two days of practice prior to qualifying to get used to the course. During this practice, we caught up with last year's bronze medalist, Harry Maine from Liverpool, England, to get his thoughts on pressure to do well. The pressure is definitely there. After placing third last year, I like I want to I want to drop the podium again, but I just feel like it it takes much more concentration because you've got to be focused on where everybody else is going and see kind of what you what you're up against, what the other riders who you think may podium, what lines they're taking, and it's going to be a hard one this year. But I'm up for it. I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. This this year the course is real crazy. Like you've got such a diverse amount of street stuff on one side, then you've got the box section in the middle. And it seems like for everybody to hit everything, you've got to be such a diverse, well-rounded rider. So I'm, I think it'll be interesting to see people, everybody thinks some certain people are going to win. But I think this time it's about being able to ride everything just rather than the jump box. So we'll see what happens. I'm pretty, pretty much freestyling it tomorrow in qualifying. I'm just going to go with the flow, see where I'm facing and just ride that. But I see like a lot of riders taking real big lines and that, I'm not the best at lines. I prefer to just ride things like the box but this time I've got to use lines so I'm struggling main competitors I'd say Kyle Baldock for sure Pat Casey for sure and Kevin Peraza they're all looking real good like all, all Monster Energy athletes as well always hooking up the best so it's a battle between us guys Civil Session is not just about the contest, it's also about the culture of action sports. This is the seventh year for the Simple Session Film Festival. This year it was three days, 11 different films were shown, and three world premieres. The highlight being the premiere of the new Sabrosa video, Get Used To It. Sabrosa is a four-year sponsor of Simple Session and this was easily the most anticipated release this year. 400 people packed into the theater and they were not disappointed. Years in the making, this video took an unconventional approach to BMX films. It, there's so many things that you have to take in to make a good BMX movie. Like, there's there's been a, like a, a lot of videos that have come out recently where it's just been like watching web edits after you know every section's had a web edit. Whereas we tried to bring like everyone's styles and how they act and their personalities into their sections and keep it all going in one big thing so it's a it's a bmx video not a bmx video full of sections do you know what i mean like it's it's our video like we had hands on with it the film festivals are always a highlight especially for the fans as they get to enjoy the new eye candy right along with the riders starring in them and it's not simple session without the parties the nightlife here is legendary. A great opportunity to have a few drinks, bust out some dance moves, and get a little wild into the night. Um, so far I've been to both of the parties and went to the Sabrosa video premiere last night and it's really cool. It's just like, there's always something to do. Like, you get done riding and you're not stuck sitting around the hotel. There's so many people, like, everyone's down to hang out and have a good time and the parties are really crazy here. Like. I think I left the bar last night at 3 o'clock in the morning there were still people lined up at the front of the bar to get in and it's just crazy coming from home where everything shuts down at 2 o'clock in the morning and coming here where the parties go till 6 a.m. like it's nuts. It's cool though. After the break, BMX qualifications. So many different styles of riding from the best riders on the planet. We're starting off with 104 riders, but only 24 will advance to the finals. Here's a preview you aren't going to want to miss. Who has what it takes? We're going to find out coming up next.
And good morning. Riders woke up to bitter cold in Tallinn, but things would certainly heat up later in the day as qualification is finally here. Riders loaded up on the shuttle buses to get in a little practice before the contest started. Luckily, a lot of the lost bicycles showed up during the night so riders could breathe a sigh of relief. One of those lucky enough to get his bike was Tommy Dugan. His bike came late last night, so Dugan, along with a few friends, got a private practice session. Tom took some time out for some fans and then grabbed his helmet to get ready for his first time riding at Saku Arena. Dugan rode awesome in qualifying, doing some of the biggest airs along with original lines and style-filled box jump hits. Uh, my first run, I thought, was cool. You know, I landed everything I wanted to do and uh, it worked out. Second run, I kind of blew it. Uh, I thought about it too much, but I mean, it was still had a lot of fun. Plan for the final, uh, I don't know. Try a few different lines and just try not to fall, but I don't, yeah, I don't really have a plan for the final, I guess. Just ride and have as much fun as I can out there, like under that pressure. Just try to stay chill. I've been riding for about 14, 15 years going on and uh, race for the first few years. That's pretty common, you know, you, you can like tell the dudes that have raced and have not, you know, it's like, I feel like we ride a little bit different, you know, just go a bit faster and shit. And it's, that's the best way I think to go about it, you know, hauling ass. Yeah, my parents, they've always like let me do whatever I want, you know, just kind of expected me to uh, do like better myself, you know, just go for a goal but I, mean, I think they wanted me to like go to school and college you know and get a good job at, like every parent I'm sure but uh, once I started actually like doing something with riding I think they started realizing that I don't know this is what I could, was gonna do and they couldn't you know they couldn't change it and now they like it and they can see what I'm doing you know traveling the world and all this all this stuff. Josh Harrington is always a crowd favorite his diverse riding is always so entertaining to watch, like this over ice pick and back over on the sub rail, super impressive, especially since he only had an hour of practice. I'd say that not having any practice and then showing up last minute kind of takes the pressure off because if things don't go good, I'm just gonna say, well, I tried, and hopefully because the pressure's off, I'll end up just riding good because I'm not like expecting anything big. I like the course, it's got a lot of unique obstacles, a lot of things that I've never ridden before. Nate Wessel's really good at creating weird things that work, and there's a lot of weird things that work out there, and I usually like the weird courses, so I'm pretty stoked on it. I usually try to plan out the first part of my run, and then if that works out, just go from there. Uh, this contest, because I got in so late, I barely got in any practice, so I basically know six or seven tricks I want to do, and then just whatever I'm heading towards, I'm going to try to do what I, what I can do, but it's probably the least planned I've been for a contest in a while, so it might be kind of fun that way. BMX riders are getting so good and the courses are so different, you really don't know. Like there's a, there's 20 guys that could win easily. I mean, there's guys you know that'll be up the top, like Kyle Baldock and Harry Main, guys like that, but I don't know, a street style dude could come out and nail all the technical stuff and beat anyone, so it's really up in the air. Bruno Hoffman placed seventh last year with his street-inspired style. Another familiar face in the finals, the young German also won Simple Session Summer Session in 2010. Hello, I'm Bruno Hoffmann. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Germany and this is my fourth time in Estonia. Like I live in a small town called Siegen. It's like pretty much between Cologne and Frankfurt. And uh, the BMX thing is growing like pretty much every, every spring. Like you see more kids. We got uh, bikes for Christmas. So now I would say there's probably like 60, 70 kids in my town. And like with 10 of them, we go ride like on a daily basis. So yeah, it's awesome. When I'm at home, I probably wake up and chill for a bit and then just go ride. But I know there's not too much to ride at home. All my friends still at school, I have to work, so I know it's always, always difficult to get everyone together to ride, but pretty regular day usually. So oh, I, think it's, I think it's awesome because Simple Session always got like so many different nationalities, like riders that I know, come out of the country especially for this and like for the first time as well. So it's always cool to see um, yeah, people from all over the world and not only like Europe and America. The USA's AJ Anaya put together lots of big tricks during his qualifying run. 
AJ placed 16th last year, and he would love to make finals again this year. My name is AJ and I. I'm coming from Southern California, Costa Mesa, and this is my second time at Simple Session. I kind of freestyle and I kind of plan, like you want to start out with a plan, but like I just kind of let the park talk to me and just let it happen. Like if I land a little bit too far on a certain ramp and I'm going in a different direction, I'll just kind of just go with that. And luckily like I got to ride the park a little bit and able to do things on each section. So it's like not too big of a deal. I believe there's 112 riders, which is the most, the biggest competition in the world for that matter. Like. The invitation is so big. There's, I think they said over 30 countries. Um, there's a lot of really good riders. There's some Australians that are good. I like Kyle Baldock, but I also like my friend that I ride with on a daily basis, Daniel Sandoval. Like, he's been working really hard this year to, to like, he's always kind of been on top in like top five at every contest, but he's determined to win. So I'm rooting for him. You know, got a biased opinion. 18-year-old Daniel Sandoval is an absolute BMX prodigy. Last year, he missed the podium by one spot, placing fourth. He is one of the guys that is really pushing the progression of BMX. My name is Daniel Sandoval from Corona, California, USA. This is uh, my second time here in Simple Session. Uh, last year was pretty great. Like, it was a really good experience. It was one of the, one of the best contests I've been so far. Um, the course this year is pretty tricky, it has a lot of street course, like street's not my thing, but like I'm willing to try street because it's a challenge, so it's good. Uh, my expectations is for um, my riding, like I want to be impressed by my own riding and be satisfied with my own riding. It's definitely like a different vibe from a lot of contests because yeah, your friends are here, we're all having a good time, and then also the crowd's behind you, backing you up on everything you do and just 100% supportive. Second place qualifying honors goes to Mexico's Kevin Peraza. Second time at Simple Session for Kevin and ninth place last year, Kevin certainly wanted to step things up and he did. Peraza rode amazing in practice and that carried over into his run. Speed and style is a great way to describe how Kevin rode. He kept everything flowing while at the same time boosting and making the most difficult tricks look incredibly easy. And the best part was he did it with a smile on his face. Kevin had one small slip over the street spine, but that was his only mistake and it didn't hurt him in the eyes of the judges. He started things off with an incredibly stretched Superman seat grab, and then he used that momentum throughout the rest of his run. Picture perfect decades, front flips, and a huge flare whip at the end all helped Kevin earn a spot in the finals. A name Simple Session fans have been waiting to see in Talon was this one, Kyle Baldock from Australia. Kyle is leading the pack in BMX progression. He does the biggest tricks and makes them look like child's play. Well, I'm Kyle Baldock. Uh, I'm from Australia and it's my first time at Simple Session. I wanted to come the last two years in a row. And uh, I think something happened the first year and I couldn't ride, I think. And then last year I was like, I was coming, like that was the thing, I was here and whatever, and then I guess something uh, happened again, I don't even know what happened, like sponsors might have, we might have just been talking and, and misdated or something, and something popped up in the middle, but this year I made it 100% I'm coming, and I'm, I'll you know, not go to any other contest except for this one, because I was meant to go to Toronto Jam, but I came to this one instead because I've always wanted to come here. We've been travelling for five days, so it feels like we've had hardly any sleep or anything, but uh, the riding out there has been like crazy, you know. I've tried to sneak on a few times and not my heat, and I got kicked off and stuff, but it's okay. But it's just, it's a good course, I love it, you know. Shout out to Nate Wessel and everyone that built it. It's, it's probably one of, uh, what I've seen on TV and being here, it's better than what I've seen on TV, so I can't wait to get out there and just do my run, you know. I didn't actually think I was going to win because Kevin rode amazingly. I, well, everyone did really. So, like me, I think I was last in my heat, and there was still two more to go. So I rode to where I thought I needed to ride and I did like a few tricks that I wanted to do like flip double and fire flare and stuff but I crashed as well because it was so hard to breathe like for us Australians we come in from humid now it's all I don't even know cold air or recycled air something it just feels different to us but yeah pretty much uh, I just rode as good as I could and that was how it just played out that I came first and stoked on it really.
absolutely incredible riding went down here in the qualifying rounds. And there is your qualifying champion, Kyle Baldock. So much great riding went down today. If we were going to show you all, this show would be three hours long. Check out a little highlight from some of the other riders. And now the stage is set for the finals. Our top five, Logan Martin, Devin Smiley, Daniel Sandoval, Kevin Peraza, and your number one qualifier, Kyle Baldock. Also getting into the finals, Bruno Hoffman in 13th place, and the USA's Tommy Dugan squeaking in there at 19th. 24 riders, seven different countries represented in the finals. Who will be crowned Simple Session Champion? Be sure to keep your eye out for part two. Thanks for watching, everybody.